The way these reduction proofs will work will mostly be similar. So remember, we are going to create, construct an adversary B. So let me draw a box for B. So within this box, I am going to write the code, let's say pseudocode for B. B can use this A as a subroutine. So I can draw a box for A here. And B can call this A. How B is going to interact with A is defined exactly as in the scheme X. Remember the challenger and adversary based definitions. A is going to be the adversary, so it will receive some particular input from the challenger, maybe send something back, let's say receive something again, and then finally let's say output. So in this game, A will be the adversary, and we have no idea how A works. Okay. But B, we need to construct B, so we need to define the pseudocode here. Now, B will act as simulating the challenger to the adversary. So, the code here should look similar to the challenger in the X's security game, security experiment, as far as A is concerned. Furthermore, remember, we have no idea how A works. The only thing B knows is that A is going to behave, let's say, according to this game. So A will send some message as defined in this game. And then let's say A's output will make sure that A wins this game with some good probability. Okay? Those are the only things B can assume. For B, on the other hand, there's the game, the security associated with the scheme Y. Now B, as far as the scheme Y is concerned, needs to behave like an adversary. And it will interact with some outside challenger that is defined for the scheme Y. So this outside challenger is going to give B, let's say, something according to the Y's security game maybe B will send something to the challenger receive it back and then let's say also B needs to output something at the end to win the game now this challenger there is a well-defined code here and this code is defined by the challenger of the scheme Y so we know the scheme Y's game we know what's going to happen here. We don't know what's going to happen inside A, but we know that this interaction will take place. We know for scheme Y, this interaction is going to place take place. So the interaction is, here is defined by scheme Y. The interaction here is defined by scheme X. And B's goal overall is to somehow write down its code such that let's say these messages will somehow be tied to the messages okay and at the end if a wins this game hopefully what we want is b wins this game now there are very important rules here Remember, we need a PPT adversary B. So, what it means here is the following. We are assuming A itself is already PPT. So, we don't know the code of A, but we know whatever happens is PPT. If A is running in probabilistic polynomial time, this means there are at most polynomially many such interactions as well. So, these interactions, all of them, 
will be at most polynomial. Now, A is a subroutine of B. So, B will be incurring all this time, but everything here is probably the polynomial time, so don't worry. Now, this interaction here must also be probabilistic polynomial time. So, A must only interact polynomially many times with its challenger. Sorry, B must interact polynomially many times with its challenger. And the code for B here, this whole thing going on here, must also be PPT. So, number one rule for reductions is that we need to show that B we construct must be PPT. Number two rule is about simulation. What are we simulating? Remember, B is simulating this challenger for the adversary. So all this interaction here as far as A is concerned, it should be essentially indistinguishable from what a real challenger would have done in the game defined for X. So B, B's behavior in terms of its interaction with A should look like the behavior of the challenger in X's game. And then we have a third condition. The third condition has something to do with probability of winning. Now, remember what we said. So here, we are assuming A wins the game for X. So for example, if the game for X required that A guesses this bit, let's say, for the eavesdropper security of encryption with 1 over 2 plus negligible probability winning that would mean A achieves it A guesses the correct bit with 1 over 2 plus some non-negligible let's say probability now let's say B's winning condition for scheme Y was that it needs to find something, let's say, with some non-negligible probability. What we need to show is that if A wins this game, meaning, let's say, A finds this thing with 1 over 2 plus non-negligible probability, then remember, B takes it, runs through some code, and outputs its response. B must also win its game, let's say, with non-negligible advantage. So, if A has non-negligible advantage, then this must imply that B has non-negligible advantage in winning its own game. Remember, A wins the game for X, B is going to win the game for Y. For every reduction, First, you provide this code, and then you need to analyze these three points. Show that everything you do is probabilistic polynomial time. Show that B is indeed simulating the challenger for scheme X for the adversary. And show that in terms of winning probabilities, if A wins its game, B wins its game. Okay? Now, remember our reasoning here, again in terms of contrapositive. What this would mean is the following. Since we don't know any such algorithm B that has this non-negligible, let's say, winning advantage, all the algorithms we know as B, meaning they are trying to break scheme Y, they have only negligible advantage. Now, as for the contrapositive, if B, all algorithms B have negligible advantage, then this means all algorithms A must also have negligible advantage.
Why? Remember, this was a there exists condition. When you go to the contrapositive, it becomes a for all condition. If all algorithms B have only negligible advantage because scheme Y is secure, then it implies that all algorithms A must have a negligible advantage as well. And this now concludes our proof because if all algorithms A must have negligible advantage in breaking X, of course, assuming that Y is secure, then we are done. We already proved if Y is secure, then X must be secure.